Today on Pro Church Daily, we're talking about five SEO improvements you can make to your church's website. Well, hey there, and welcome to Pro Church Daily, the show where in 10 minutes or less, you'll get your daily dose of tips and tactics to help your church share the message of Jesus while we navigate the biggest communication shift we've seen in the last 500 years. I'm your host, Alex Mills. I'm joined, as always, by the boss man. It's Brady Shearer. And today, we're talking about five SEO improvements you can make to your church's website today. SEO is an acronym, stands for Search Engine Optimization, Mm -hmm. and it has to do with how easily your church's website can be found within search. And what I wanted to do on this episode of Pro Church Daily is talk about five improvements you can make to your website's existing SEO, and also to just make the disclaimer that there's no such thing as like achieving perfect SEO. Right. You know, like all you can do is continually get better. And in this episode, we're going to offer five improvements. But if you want to do a really deep dive into SEO and make it as best as it can possibly be, uh, two resources that I would recommend are moz.com, M O Z.com, mm-hmm. and backlinko.com. Both tremendous resources yeah. on SEO. But let's talk about five improvements your church can make right now. The first has nothing to do with your website per se. It has all to do with your Google My Business. Google My Mm. Business is a platform that local organizations are meant to use so that when someone searches for Life Abundant Niagara, not only does their website and maybe social platform show up in search, but there's also on the right-hand side of Google search, the Google My Business uh, platform that shows up in your church's profile there. In that profile, you'll see hours of operation, the address, where it's just linked directly to Google Maps so people can find directions. Yeah. There's actually photos. So if you search for Pro Church Tools, you'll see our website and all of our social platforms on the first page of Google. But you'll also see our office space, the picture we uploaded to our Google My Business profile, yeah. which we really only did to learn about the profile of Google My Business because don't come to our office because... <laughs> There's nothing here we can sell you. Right. But you can actually, please do come. We'll yeah, come visit. Fine. A lot of people do come by from now and again. But uh, it shows photos. It'll show Facebook and Google reviews that mm-hmm. are directly connected to that profile. And it also has contact information, phone, email, and of course, your website link is found there as well. Yeah. You have to verify your Google My Business profile. They'll mail you an actual thing in the mail to your address to make sure that you actually authenticate, verify that address is yours. But basically, this is the easiest and best improvement that you can make that you haven't already. Yeah. And it doesn't even have to do anything with your church's website. And it's totally free. Totally free. Yeah. Continuing along, improvements you can make SEO-wise that are free and are not a part of your church's website, Facebook reviews and Google reviews. Mm. I don't know about you, Alex, and I don't know about the listener or viewer of Pro Church Daily right now, but reviews to me matter so much online. And when I'm looking for a new restaurant, a new barber, you know, a new counselor, whatever it might be, I'm going straight to those reviews. Absolutely. And when someone's looking for a new church, they're doing the same thing. And so it doesn't matter if your website is perfectly optimized, if someone lands on your front page of Google rankings for Life Abundant Niagara and they see you know, all of these reviews that are not good. And so you want to make sure that your Google and Facebook reviews have as many possible five-star reviews as possible. And what you can do is you can just run a contest, let's say, in your church and be like, hey, we're giving away a $200 gift card to this amazing restaurant in Niagara, in our in Tallahassee, you know, yeah. in Vegas, wherever you are. And the way to enter is you gotta leave a review for our church on Facebook and Google. Yeah, you could leverage your volunteer teams to do that. To do that as well, we've talked about we talked about this a while ago. But um, leveraging your your volunteer teams to we suggested you know change their profile picture on Facebook at, to your current sermon graphic or whatever. But that that is applicable to this as well. You know, start it with people in house and no need to be ashamed of that. But get the ball rolling with with honest reviews. And, uh, you know, when I'm searching for things online, whether it's products I'm about to buy or I've just booked an Airbnb. And so customer reviews is my first tier of filtering. Yeah. Um, I will almost exclusively look at customer reviews and filter out a small list and then look at all everything that those Airbnbs or restaurants or whatever have to offer. But if it's not reviewed well, I don't even need to look at the rest because I know that people who've been there before their experience wasn't good. So this one's really, really important. And how do reviews work? They work that we leave negative reviews when we're upset. We don't leave positive reviews when things go well. And so it's okay to ask for reviews. Mm -hmm. You probably will need to because you gotta recognize that the way reviews work is that you have to be compelled to leave a review. And what compels you? A bad experience because you expect a good experience. If a good experience happens, you're not likely to leave a review because 
that was what you expected. Yeah. So it's okay to ask for reviews, incentivize reviews even, because it's so important to new visitors checking out your website and getting connected to your church. Especially for churches. Not a lot of people are probably thinking that leaving reviews for churches is a thing. Yeah. But it's important for us, like you said, as far as search engine optimization is concerned. So let's just go for it. Fourth SEO improvement that you can make, this does pertain to your actual church's website, Mm -hmm. is keyword phrase optimization across your website. So we're talking about H1 title tags. We're talking about the meta description for your pages that, you know, the kind of three to four line text that shows up in searches. And we're talking about keywords in the body content of your website pages as well. And when it comes to keyword optimization, really what you're looking for mostly as a church, assuming you're not in a crazy giant city, and if you are in a major metropolis, you're gonna change this from the city name to the neighborhood name. Mm -hmm. You know, So if you're in San Diego, maybe using the San Diego keyword isn't great, but you could put Ocean Beach or Pacific Beach or La Jolla or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so what you wanna do with keyword phrases, you wanna get the word church, and your city or neighborhood's name in every single place that you can put it, right? right? So especially on your homepage, in the page title, in the meta description, in the copy of the body of your website, you want to get San Diego. Actually, no, you wouldn't want San Diego. Like I just said, you want Oceanside Church. And so when someone searches churches in Oceanside, your church comes up yeah. because you are optimizing for those keywords. Now, how many H1 tags should I have on each page? Oh, just one H1 tag. Just one? So I, I shouldn't have more than one? Well, if you're using a slider, you might have six. Right. So that's not going to work well for my SEO? Right. With oh, SEO, okay. you only want one H1 tag per page. Oh, thanks for clearing that up for me. Okay, that's helpful. Five, the last SEO improvement, is to use a tool like Pingdom Web Tools. Mm. You can Google search Pingdom Web Tools. And this is basically checking is my website's performance up to par? You'll see your page's load time compared to other pages. You'll get your uh, Google page speed ranking and it'll basically give you a score out of 100 along with a letter grade. You probably want 80 or above and it'll give you all these different ways that you can optimize for page speed and page optimization. Page speed, Google uses that for rankings. They do not want to send a user to your website and them to have a bad experience because that reflects poorly on them. It's like if your friend recommends a restaurant and the restaurant sucks, you're like, I'm not going to trust that friend anymore. Their recommendations are bad. Same with Google. They want their users to have a good experience. So if your website is not optimized, if it loads slowly, it's going to be a bad experience. They will penalize your rankings. Use a tool like Pingdom Web Tools to assess your church website's current status with that. We had somebody give us some feedback online just this week Mm. about using this tool. They they ran their website through this tool and they were shocked with how slow it was running. Mm. So what they did was they went into their website and they just compressed all their images and video files and said, you know, we just, this file doesn't need to be 20 megs, it can be two megs. And so they just made all those files a little bit smaller and ran the website again and it was was loading way faster and that's going to help them in the long run when it comes to people finding their church. So simple, easy things you can do. It's all free and you can do it right now. Of course, if you're looking for a website builder for your church, we would recommend the one that we built. Of course. Nucleus. You can find it at nucleus.church. And I've talked enough about Nucleus, so let's hear it from one of our users. This is from Devin. He's a student pastor. Devin says, Nucleus has been the single best thing we've ever done as a church. We absolutely love it. Our main concern was our giving going in. We were worried that giving would go down due to our app being Hmm. responsible for about 80% of our monthly donations. But since switching to Nucleus, our giving has gone up. As a matter of fact, it's gone up 105% from this week last year. God has been doing amazing things here, and we're extremely excited to have Nucleus as a major tool in that growth. Wow. I cannot make a promise that your giving will go up 105% (laughs) in the first year of Nucleus. You know, it's like those weight loss disclaimers. Results (laughs) are not typical, I guess. Yeah. Nucleus.church, a new kind of website builder for churches. That'll do it for today's episode of Pro Church Daily. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching today's episode of Pro Church Daily. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications so you never miss another video. And if you like this episode, it would mean the world to us if you give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.